The film begins with the appearance of a female psychiatrist named Dr. Mariko walking towards the station exit. Mariko is on her way home and must catch a bus in front of the station. But unfortunately, she missed the bus just before the bus left, and some of the school kids on the bus laughed at her. Moments after the bus was running, suddenly the bus exploded. It looks like a child managed to get out with his whole body burned, trying to save himself. Mariko who saw this, immediately approached the child and asked for help. Not far from the location of the explosion, two other women were watching the accident. Apparently, the two women were the alleged masterminds of the recent bomb terror attack. The two women seemed satisfied with the success of the terror that caused the chaos. Meanwhile, Detective Chaya and Detective Hirono are assigned to conduct crime scene investigations. They discover the fact that the bus explosion was caused by a mysterious terror. The detectives discover that some of the bus passengers were found with their tongues cut off. In discussing this case with other police officers, Detective Chaya said that this suicide bombing started with a fortune teller named Kinjo. Some time ago, he did a live broadcast predicting that there would be a bomb explosion on a bus, and he found out who did it. Unfortunately, it turns out that he became a victim of the bomb he had predicted earlier. Currently, the police and detectives are finding it difficult to find the real culprit because, based on the evidence at the scene, the perpetrator used an unusual explosive device and was sold illegally. Chaya and Hirono then continued to investigate a warehouse. They heard a woman scream from inside the building when they arrived. They rushed to the barn door, but when Hirono opened the door, suddenly a bomb exploded and sent him flying. Chaya then entered the warehouse that had just exploded carefully. He then found a man standing in the middle of the rubble with a wound on his head. The man's name was Ichiro Suzuki. Ichiro was then taken to the police station because he was the only person at the scene. While in the cell, he listens to the conversation of two criminals who say that the person will not be punished even if he has killed someone. The next day, when Ichiro passed the two criminals, he immediately beat them. Two policemen tried to stop Ichiro, but he ignored them. In addition, apparently, Ichiro has extraordinary strength, so the police are overwhelmed. Ichiro's attack stopped when he managed to pry out the villain's eye. Detective Chaya, who received the incident report, suspected that Ichiro had mental problems. He was then transferred to a special cell for psychiatric evaluation. Before Ichiro entered the special cell, he could memorize the prison plan in a very short time. In this cell, several doctors are trusted to treat Ichiro. One of these doctors is Dr. Mariko. They found that Ichiro's body was covered with stab wounds and burns. They then concluded that there was a mechanical disturbance in Ichiro's brain. Dr. Mariko then conducted an experiment by stabbing Ichiro's body with a pin, but he did not react. During the observation, they discovered that Ichiro went to the toilet exactly an hour after he ate, which he did every day, even though there are no clocks in the cells or the observation room. Elsewhere, the two girls behind this serial murder are seen in a room. The two of them were previously in the same room as Ichiro when the bomb exploded in the warehouse, but they both managed to escape. The two girls were named Mito Rikawa and Yuria. Mito Rikawa apparently knows Ichiro's super abilities and plans to take him away. The next day, Yuria disguises herself as a nurse, puts a bug in Mariko's bag, and duplicates her key. When Mariko was about to escort Ichiro to the cell, a young man named Shimura called out. Shimura is Mariko's patient. His presence apparently caught Ichiro's attention because he stared at him for a long time. After Shimura left, Mariko realized that Ichiro was interested in Shimura's presence. Mariko visits Dr. Aizawa's house to find out about Ichiro's background. Dr. Aizawa is a man who treated Ichiro as a child. He said that since childhood, Ichiro did look different from other children his age. He always sat quietly in the corner of the room like a doll and did not show spontaneous behavior like humans in general. According to Dr. Aizawa's statement, both of Ichiro's parents were victims of a hit and run and died, and Ichiro was cared for by his grandfather named Irishu. Irishu is interested in his grandson and asks Dr. Aizawa to observe him. Every day Aizawa teaches Ichiro to go to the toilet after every meal. Ichiro did it if only he got instructions from Aizawa. Aizawa says that Ichiro doesn't have a brain disorder, but instead he has an extraordinary brain compared to other humans. He can memorize the book and its contents completely just by reading it at a glance. Besides, he is also able to solve complex puzzles in a very short time. Aizawa said that Ichiro's brain power was like a library with thousands of books that could rival computer intelligence. Aizawa gives Ichiro the nickname the Brain Man. Despite these advantages, Ichiro apparently only eats and urinates when given instructions. After being satisfied with Aizawa's observations, Irishu then told him to leave, and he wanted to do something to Ichiro. Irishu then sent a man named Ino who is a martial arts expert, to teach Ichiro self-defense. Irishu said he wanted Ichiro to eradicate evil on Earth, but this was based on his revenge against the hit-and-run perpetrator who killed his son. 
Thanks to his super abilities, Ichiro can learn martial arts quickly and easily. Seeing this, Ino took Ichiro to leave his grandfather's house to save him and awaken his human soul. The night after Ichiro went out with Ino, unexpectedly, his grandfather's house was robbed and the robbers burned their house. While trying to escape, Ichiro met the robber and killed him by strangling him without hesitation. Apparently, this killing behavior can be done without orders like Ichiro usually does. After Irishu's death at his house, Ichiro disappeared. Not long after the incident, several criminals, such as robbers, murderers, and rapists, were found murdered. The detectives concluded that Ichiro was the one who killed these criminals. Knowing this fact, Chaya concludes that Ichiro was not the suicide bomber on the bus the other day, but he is trying to kill the real culprit. Mariko then continued her observation of Ichiro. To Ichiro, Mariko says that eight years ago, her sister was found murdered with her eyebrows and hair shaved off. The perpetrator of the murder of his sister was Shimura, who met Ichiro in the observation room the other day. Mariko then tries to resuscitate Ichiro by saying that he is not really a murderer. Sometime after that, Ichiro went to the prison by car. Silently, he untied his handcuffs with a clip and quickly charged at Hirono, who was in front of him and held him hostage. Chaya, who was nearby, tried to save Hirono who was currently under threat. Suddenly outside, Mito Rikawa and Yuria were seen riding a motorbike, trying to align their vehicle with Ichiro's car. Mito Rikawa and Yuria shoot arrows at the police car, escorting them and causing an accident and traffic chaos. In the prison car, apparently, Ichiro had noticed the arrival of Mito Rikawa and Yuria. That's why he ordered the bus to stop. Outside, Mito Rikawa and Yuria took one of the policemen hostages and ordered Ichiro to come out. They said that they wanted to pick up Ichiro. Unexpectedly, Ichiro got out of the prison car and immediately shot Yuria. Before Yuria fell, she pressed the detonator so that the bomb she had previously planted in another police car exploded. A big explosion was inevitable. Mito Rikawa is apparently still alive from the incident. She then rushed to escape on her motorbike. As a result of the attack, Hirono had to be hospitalized. At the hospital, Mariko, who was in the toilet, was suddenly attacked by Mito Rikawa. After the attack, the hospital lights went out completely, and suddenly, a series of explosions destroyed several parts of the hospital. When Mariko woke up, she was already tied up in a room with bombs all over her body. All of this was done by Mito Rikawa to provoke Ichiro's presence. Mito Rikawa had planted bombs in every hospital pipeline. Meanwhile, several explosions are still happening in another part of the hospital. Chaya and several other police officers are investigating the location of another bomb. Suddenly, Ichiro said the bombs had been planted in all parts of the hospital. He then said that he was going to the control room. Chaya thought that Ichiro was the mastermind of this explosion. However, according to his request, Chaya still escorted Ichiro to the control room. When they arrived at the control room, they found Hirono tied to a chair with bombs all over his body. Suddenly, Chaya's phone rang. Apparently, it was Mito Rikawa. She says she wants him to kill Ichiro, and she threatens to detonate another bomb if her request is not fulfilled. Chaya says he has a bomb disposal team and doesn't need to bow down to Mito Rikawa. On the one hand, it seems that the bomb disposal team referred to by Chaya fell due to an unexpected bomb attack. Feeling that he had no choice, Chayo attacked Ichiro, and a fierce battle ensued between them. Hirono, who tried to stop the fight, dropped himself so that the bombs all over his body exploded. Hirono died right then and there. Meanwhile, Ichiro escapes from Chaya and goes to the location ordered by Mito Rikawa. At that place, Mito Rikawa, along with Mariko, were in the car. Mito Rikawa then drove her car at high speed and intended to kill Ichiro. But Ichiro who has super strength is not easily defeated and can rise again after the first attack from Mito Rikawa. Mito Rikawa then once again crashed her car into Ichiro, and again, he didn't die in the crash. From inside the car, Ichiro can see the sadness of seeing himself who gets continuous attacks from Mito Rikawa. Ichiro, who is superhuman, turns out to have his maximum limit. His brain ordered him to continue to survive, but his body condition was already unable to. Mito Rikawa then once again backed up the car and sped towards Ichiro. That's when suddenly Mariko pulled the brake lever and sent the car they were traveling in, bouncing and making Mito Rikawa unconscious for a moment. This time is used by Ichiro to attack Mito Rikawa. He then dragged Mito Rikawa to the end and strangled her. Unexpectedly, Mariko gets out of the car and yells at Ichiro not to kill Mito Rikawa. She tells Ichiro that he is not a murderer. However, Mito Rikawa instead intended to detonate the bomb on Mariko's body by taking the detonator in her pocket. Just as Mito Rikawa was about to press the button, suddenly a bullet pierced her body. Apparently, the shot was launched by Chaya who managed to catch up with them. Chaya then walked up to Mito Rikawa and shot her several times. After that, he pointed his gun at Ichiro who was standing next to him. And when Chaya was about to launch his shot, apparently, the bullets in his gun ran out. 
Seeing that, Ichiro didn't say anything else and left Chaya and Mariko with half his body ability and limping. At one time, Shimura was seen walking in the rain. He seems to be carrying a package and approaching a house. Elsewhere, Mariko who was sitting next to her laptop suddenly received a message from Ichiro that said someone was going to kill her most important patient. Mariko then ran through the rain and approached a house not far from hers. She banged on Shimura's door and found his room with the lights off. Mariko then shouted Shimura's name and sure enough, she found Shimura dead, lying in a room. She was surprised to see that, then she seemed to hear something. Mariko finds out where the sound came from and finds a child hiding in Shimura's bathtub. Apparently, Shimura was planning to make the child his next victim. The next day, she contacts Ichiro. Mariko asks how Ichiro knew that Shimura would kill again. Ichiro said he saw bite marks on Shimura's new arm at his meeting. Ichiro said that all this time, Shimura had used him so that he could be free. Mariko then asks why Ichiro saved her and the little boy. Then Ichiro said that Mariko was the one who first shed tears for him and he wanted to thank her for that. The phone was then hung up and Ichiro seemed to smile sincerely. The moral of this story is that human feelings are important in this life. Even if you have superpowers, but you don't have feelings, then that power is useless.